The question is, an elderly female presents with a white plaque in the upper right buccal vestibule, extending to the buccal mucosa, which could not be scraped. The toluidine blue test was performed, which guided the site of insufficient biopsy. Histological examination revealed intense epithelial dysplasia. The most likely diagnosis is, and they have given the image for you as well. So over here, what you should have done, and a key trick again would have been, you will have to look at the image and you can see that it is a white plaque that is there on the buccal mucosa. So you have definitely you have eliminated the fact that it is there on the buccal mucosa. So all those points you don't need to read from the uh, question. You need you know that there is a white plaque that is white mass that is present on the right side on the buccal surface. And you just need to the key points that you could have probably that would have been uh, of importance in this question would have been that it could not be scraped off. And a toluidine blue test was there and you saw intentional epithelial dysplasia. So these are the three key points that are there in the question. The rest, the whole of the re remaining question is absolutely useless. Why? Because the image itself has directed you to a white lesion. And in the white lesion, all the four options that are given over here are white lesion, no doubt. But they have very clearly mentioned that it is not, it could not be scraped off. Now. Uh, and they have said that there is intense epithelial dysplasia. Okay, so intense epithelial dysplasia means lichen planus is completely ruled out. So it would have been only amongst the three options that are there: homogeneous leukoplakia, heterogeneous leukoplakia, and varicose leukoplakia. Now, amongst these three options, you have to understand that what is the morphological pattern or how clinically does leukoplakia appear to be in the oral cavity for you to understand whether this is going to be a homogeneous leukoplakia or heterogeneous leukoplakia. Heterogeneous means non homogeneous leukoplakia and a varicose leukoplakia. Okay, so these images that you are seeing over here are the various types of leukoplakia that occur in the oral cavity. So, what you are seeing over here in the first image is basically a homogeneous patch, which is again just a single patch which is there, and this single patch is present on the floor of the mouth. It is white in color and it is not scrapable. And the entire plaque, if you see, the entire mass is one single patch or one single island. So, what you are seeing in the first image is nothing but your homogeneous leukoplakia. The second image that you are seeing is showing a surface. Again, it is an island of a white plaque, but on the island, you are seeing some form of nodules that are present. So, these nodules are what is termed as non homogeneous leukoplakia or nodular leukoplakia. This is what is heterogeneous leukoplakia. On the other hand, on the third image, you can see that the entire appearance gives a very cauliflower like growth. Cauliflower, if you've seen how cauliflower appears, you will see that the cauliflower florets of the cauliflower have this continuous surface which is rough and pebbled. So, this growth is what is called as varicose growth and varicose leukoplakia gives such an appearance. So, based on the three images that you are seeing over here, 1, 2 and 3, you know for a fact that 1 is homogeneous, 2 is heterogeneous and 3 is varicose. So, if you have to apply the same concept over here in this image, you will come to realize that the answer to the question because it is appearing as a single patch without any nodular growth on the surface, nor does it have any varicose growth then the answer is for this question is homogeneous leukoplakia. Now, these are the images that you are seeing over here are all the different types of leukoplakia that are there. The first image is your homogeneous leukoplakia. The second which you are seeing on the floor of the mouth is non-homogeneous leukoplakia. The third image is viricus which is seen on the ventral surface of the tongue. What you are seeing on the lateral surface both in up and down both on the upper and lower surface the upper surfaces can be candidal leukoplakia. Why? Because it can be scraped off. However, on the uh, lower image, on the lateral surface of the tongue, what you are seeing is uh, seen in patients who are having uh, Epstein Barr virus infections and it is seen in patients who are suffering from HIV. This is what is uh, your hairy, leuco hairy tongue leukoplakia. So, your leukoplakia, which is seen on the lateral surface of the tongue that is the leukoplakia that is seen over here okay uh, then what you are seeing on the 
dorsal surface of the tongue is nothing but your syphilitic leukoplakia. So these are the different types of leukoplakia that are there. And non-hairy leukoplakia is what you are seeing on the lateral surface of the tongue. And this occur, occurs bilaterally on either side. Okay. Now this is just an image about how the oral mucosa gets transferred from normal leukoplakia to normal mucosa rather to erythroplakia and erythroplakia has got the highest malignant potential why because erythroplakia means erythro means red and plaque, uh, plaque is a white patch so this erythroplakia is uh, basically occurring due to a lot of erosion of the oral mucosa and there is severe dysplasia of the cells and eventually this erythroplakia will get converted into squamous cell carcinoma Initially, it will be in C2 carcinoma, followed by which there will be a breach in the basement membrane and it will become invasive carcinoma. Okay, so if you can see, you have homogeneous appearance, then it becomes corrugated, then it becomes varicose, then it becomes speckled leukoplakia. What is speckled leukoplakia? Speckled leukoplakia is a combination of leukoplakia and erythroplakia. This is what is called as erythroleukoplakia. So, this is what is the uh, progression of normal mucosa all the way to erythroplakia and once the patient has erythroplakia very soon you can understand that it is going to be a very that the patient may have uh, epithelial dysplasia progressing to carcinoma or epithelial squamous cell carcinoma why because er erythroplakia has the highest malignant potential okay now these are all the things that you need to remember about leukoplakia one more important thing over here that they have mentioned is the toluidine blue test the toluidine blue test is basically there is a very high affinity for the dye toluidine blue for dysplastic cells that is cells where the dna is damaged the toluidine these cells have affinity the dye rather has affinity for such cells so when you have such a big patch of leukoplakic patch patch what you will do is you will place toluidine blue onto that patch and you will wait for 5 minutes and then you will rinse it off. Once you finish rinsing it, you will see area of blue in the on that patch. So what happens is, those areas are areas of se severe epithelial dysplasia. That means the epithelium over there has become dysplastic. The DNA has shown some form of mutation. So you will take a biopsy from that region and you will assess under the microscope and see what is the stage of epithelial dysplasia. One more thing that you need to remember is, Leukoplakia is a clinical term, but when you see it under the microscope, you will not call it mucoplakia. You give a diagnosis as epithelial dysplasia. So it will be mild, moderate, or severe epithelial dysplasia. That is the reason why leukoplakia is considered to be a clinical term. But when you write a histopathological report, you not give a provisional diagnosis of leukoplakia rather you will say that there is epithelial dysplasia that is seen under the microscope and you will grade it accordingly.